Hello everyone, this week's Parsha is Parashat Miketz. Now in the beginning of Parashat Miketz, the Parsha starts that Paro has a dream and as we know, he has, uh, you know, he, he, he had his dream two times, twice, and he needed someone to interpret his dreams. And the minister, um, Sarah Mashkim, he tells Paro about Yosef, they bring out Yosef, they bring him up, and and like we know, Yosef comes to Paro and he interprets the dream. He, you know, he interprets the dream. He gives him the interpretation. He tells him that there'll be seven years of plenty, and then there'll be seven years of hunger. But then, what's interesting is, um, pa, uh, uh, Yosef, he adds something. Now, uh, uh, after giving the, uh, the interpretation, he, gi he says there should be a solution. The solution is, meaning uh, the simple solution should be that you should take the grain for, you know, that will be for seven years of plenty and store it in the storehouses. And that's it. That's the solution. But Yosef adds a little bit more to that. Yosef says, which means now let Paro seek out discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Now the question is, uh, why do you need this? Like, why did Yosef have to add these words? Why did he have to add that that Yosef, that, that Paro should get a wise man for um, you know they should get a wise man to go and collect the the, the grain to store the grain. You, you know, you need an organizer. No, you need an organizer, or you need uh, like a uh, you need like a bureaucrat to go and collect all the all the grain and to store it for you know for the for the years of hunger. You don't need a wise man. Why did Yosef have to say these words? You should go and col and get a wise man, Navon Navon the Chacham, uh, discerning and wise man to go and collect. So you should be able to c collect. Uh, for the for the years of hunger. Now, if we look in, in, into the Torah, how does the Torah, how, how does the Gemara explain who is the wise man? So it says in the Gemara uh, that a wise man is Haro'e et anolat, a person who could foresee, yeah, a person who uh, uh, a person who could uh, foresee the future, uh, future development into being. Yeah, meaning a person who could see uh, what's going to happen. Meaning he could see, you know, he's, he 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 knows what what will happen. Okay, that's the that's the chacham. So uh, 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 when the country is, you know, in, in the time of plenty, you know, for example, nowadays, you know, uh, 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 when the uh, when the stocks when the stock market is up, when the real estate is booming, no one is thinking about the years of hunger. Everybody's thinking, uh, you know, everybody's thinking about vacation. Everybody's thinking about, everybody has meat, you know, in their pots. And no one is thinking about, okay, one day everything is going to go down. No, everybody's thinking about plentiness. They want to sit and enjoy their life. No one's thinking about the bad days. Everybody's thinking about the good days. Now, uh, like we know, but but, uh, but we know, yeah, but we know the real estate could, 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 you know, the uh, real estate bubble could burst or stock market could crash, but no one is thinking about these things. But let's say, but when it does happen, yeah, people, they sit and they suffer. They lose so much money. They lose all their money. But if person did not save for the, you know, for, for, for this type of days, he, he won't have money. Yeah, he won't, uh, and, and the reason is, why? Because he wasn't thinking about this uh, 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 in the years of plenty. Um, you know, nowadays, for example, the, the gas is like two, two something. Uh, before, it, like a few years ago, it, you know, it even reached uh, $4 a gallon. Uh, but, but, but in early years, like 30 years ago, uh, the gas used to be a dollar, or let's say less than a dollar. Uh, now at that time there was so much gas, there was so much oil, 
yeah, that they that they would burn excess oil. Why? Because no one was thinking about the years that we, one day the, uh, that we might uh, that we might need that oil for gas. That there will be a shortage of 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 oil. Meaning, in the time of plenty, no one is thinking about the bad days. Everybody's thinking about the good days. Let us sit and enjoy. So, according to Yosef, according to Yosef's uh, prediction. What he was telling him is, you shouldn't get, you shouldn't get just uh, uh, just a, just an organizer or let's say a bureaucrat to gather all the grain. Why? Because he, he might see, you know, he might say, listen, we have enough grain, we have enough uh, food, and 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 let's say they gather enough, and they'll say, that's it. You know, I think we shouldn't be. Uh, gathering enough why because we have seven years of plenty or, or you know a person does not who does not see that there will be a hunger soon he won't be able to gather as much as 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 grain that's why you need a person who's chacham venavon you need a person who will see what will happen after those seven years that he will be able to see the years of hunger uh, he will uh, uh, he will be able to to foresee it and 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 therefore he will be able to gather it properly and this is what Yosef was telling uh, Paro and that's why he was telling him to get someone who's chacham venavon now now what lesson can uh, uh, can we learn from this now Yosef if Torah wrote this you know uh, about Yosef about Yosef's advice the Torah is trying to teach us something that you know it's trying to teach us a lesson in our lives also um, uh, 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 we know Gaon Bevilna by his deathbed, he was crying, he was crying, and his students, you know, they asked him, why are you crying? So he answered, he said, I'm, he says, listen, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, uh, 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 I'm going to die soon, but he's telling them, but uh, uh, we are living, I'm living right now in this world, I'm living in the seven years of plenty. I'm living in the seven years of plenty. Why? He said, to do a mitzvah is not a big deal in this world. To do a mitzvah. You could do a mitzvah. Uh, um, uh, you could buy tzitzit, for example, for $10, $20. Talit, you could buy, let's say, $100 you spend. You buy uh, lula venetrok, $20, $30, $40. Tfilin, you could buy those and you will inherit internal uh, reward forever and ever meaning in this year uh, in this world is the world of plenty uh, you, you were tzitzit you get a reward meaning you're getting a mitzvah every second every moment you get a mitzvah every time you were tzitzit um, you, you learn Torah when you are learning Torah every word that you mention is a mitzvah every word you mentioning is a mitzvah every you know every second that you spend you get you will get uh, internal reward that, that you know you uh, uh, you will get a reward that's forever and ever now all this is in this world the world of plentiness but then when a person leaves this world he comes to the years of hunger which means in olama is like years of hunger there's no more mitzvot anymore you won't be able to do mitzvot you you could give you could give whatever you want but you won't be able to do mitzvot anymore yeah, whatever you harvested in this year, in, in this world, whatever you able to gather for the next world, it's meaning it's 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 in this world the years of plenty that you will be able to gather for the next world. But if a person is not thinking about the next world, he's thinking about only this world. Yeah, he's only thinking about this world. The Lexus is you know uh, which Lexus should I buy? Which car should I buy? Uh, when a person leaves this world, the Lexus is going to stay here. The house is going to stay here. Um, uh, you know, uh, 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 the house, the couches, this, that, the ha like everything that that we uh, that's dear to us. You know, it's going to stay here in this world. But what will person take with him in the next world? The mitzvot, Torah, and mitzvot. The whatever he learned, whatever he did in this world, this is what he's going to take with him. The years of plenty is in this world. The years of hunger is in the world to come. One time, one rabbi gave a lecture, and he asked, you know, he asked the audience, and he said, uh, "Let's say if Hashem would grant 
people who are dead, dead people to to get up for one hour in this world. Yeah, you'll make an announcement. Let's say they. Let's say we know that for one hour they have a right to to wake up again to become alive in this world. So so what would people do? So some so some people in the audience answered. You know they will come and visit us. They will come because you know we didn't see them for so many years. They didn't see their grandchildren. Didn't see their children for so many years. So the dead people they will get up and they will go to their uh, to their relatives. The rabbi answered no. He said no 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 that's not true. All those dead people, they will uh, 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 they will go straight to the bed midrash. They will go straight to the to the study hall to the, to the to the to to the what to learn Torah. They will go to bed midrash to learn Torah. Which means uh, the relatives will go to cemetery to greet their their relatives, but but the dead people will just get up, uh, will, will will just pass uh, by them and go straight to the bed midrash to learn Torah. Why? Because once they went to the next world, they know the value of the mitzvah. They know the value of the Torah. They know the value of of performing the mitzvah, <laughs> and they know how much it's worth. So they will just pass by us. And they will go and learn and learn and learn to get more mitzvot, to get more, uh, to get better reward. That's the lesson to us, for us. Meaning, we live in the years of plenty in this world. We should not uh, let the opportunity go by. Every moment we could do a mitzvah. Every moment, every second we could do a mitzvah. We're, you know, wearing a tzitzit. In this world, it's, it costs a few dollars. But, but you get a mitzvah every moment, every second putting on tefillin, uh, learning Torah. Every moment that you do this, you get a mitzvah, you get a mitzvah. And we should be chacham, we should be wise men, and we should save up for the next world, for the world of hunger, for the, uh, 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 for the next world, where we will be able to, to gather our, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 our rewards. Have a great Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom.